I think on paper there are lots of things that go against Obama. The economic situation is not necessarily as, as strong. Um, I, mean, uh, I always go back to the, the Onion headline the day after the election, which was so, something like, worst job in America given to black man. Um, and I think that's absolutely right. I don't, I don't know how, um, how forgiving the American population are or you know, the fact you inherit a, a very yeah. bad situation. Well, I guess we're about to find out, aren't we? Yeah. Um, but you're absolutely right. Obama on paper has um, a really, really tricky road ahead because although I think not only I, but most people would argue that he did the right things in terms of trying to stimulate the economy, focusing on jobs, um, doing things like proposing a payroll tax cut, which was opposed by all Republicans who love every other tax cut that's ever come across. So I don't know why um, uh -huh. they decided to make an exception for the one job creating measure. Um, so I think he's done all the right things. Whether that will translate into votes on election day depends on a lot of factors, many of which are not in our control. We've recently seen, for example, gas prices going up, um, which you know many of us uh, uh, you know would say, well, first of all, that's beyond the president's control. There's not a great deal you can do about it. Um, in the short term, it's to do with markets, global, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, to an American consumer, if gas prices go up, they have less money in their pockets. They're already having a hard time economically. Their life is harder. But that's one of the difficulties, isn't it? That last time he was so successful because he was able to mobilize <laughs> support. A number of those people will feel you know, that they're, that they're what, the, what they were hoping from Obama hasn't happened, uh, whether fairly or, or unfairly. So it, it's going to be much more difficult to create that same level of enthusiasm for a second term than it was for this historic first term. Yeah. Well, a re-election is always harder to generate a sense of change momentum around. Um, and, and I think we do have a really good story to tell about job creation and economic growth. I mean, we certainly, in, an, in a global economic crisis, we have outperformed Europe, for example. Um, whether the American public will buy that argument, um, I don't think it's going to have to, I don't think we can argue it on that level. I mm -hmm. think we have to talk to people about two things. One, um, the president's done a good job, he's, he's worked very hard, I think people can see he's trying, he rescued the American auto industry, which is now profitable again. There's so much of a good story to tell. Two, what is your alternative? Republicans have no plan, no, no agenda, no, no policy, nothing that they've proposed would actually significantly do anything to improve the economic situation. Um, but I think the third thing we need to think, consider is organization. Um, and I think we have a real advantage here because Republicans are, first of all, still trying to organize themselves for a primary where they're not doing a very good job, actually. We've seen participation in the Republican primary much lower than in 2008. Um, on the ground mobilization has been virtually non-existent. Most of the money spent in the Republican primary has been on an ad war with this ugly negative advertising, which is actually turning off voters, which is why you've seen such low turnout in Republican primaries, because mm -hmm. traditionally a very negative election suppresses turnout. On our side, on the other hand, in every primary, because remember, Democrats are holding a primary too. The president's the only name on the ballot, but we uh -huh. still come out and vote. And um, in fact, Democrats Abroad is having a primary. Um, from the 1st to the 9th of May, you will be able to come and participate in voting for Democrats Abroad's selection of candidate of delegates to serve in uh, the, Demo the DNC, uh, conference, DNC um, meeting in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to be right here in London. We'll have an event at the Abbey Centre in Westminster um, where people can come and cast their ballots on the 1st of May. Which is coinciding with the London Assembly elections. Which Conveniently. Is interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so that's happening. So um, how, how significant are the primaries? Because the Obama <coughs> primary just, to, just mm -hmm. took place. Obama did, uh, didn't perform that well. But obviously, everyone assumes he's going to win. Um, he's, put In no Oklahoma. he's put no money. Is it Oklahoma? Uh, uh, do, when or, you, do you mean uh, the place where there was another another there was, there was an anti-abortion candidate yes. who actually did quite well. Well, in Oklahoma, um, so there was Randall Terry, who's um, a very long story, actually. Yeah. I, I won't deviate onto it, but um, in every well, other... I'm just wondering how significant they are, because everyone assumes... Yeah. I mean, Obama is going to be the candidate. He's not putting any money yeah. into... any significant money into yeah. actually getting, getting the selection. So how the, the primaries are significant in, in one way and one way only as a test of our organizing. Um, and so what we've seen is in every state so far, almost every state so far, you've seen that it's the Democrats that have actually had the best on the ground organization in terms of staff working to get people to the polls, in terms of volunteer activation. Now it's a hard slog to get people to the polls to vote for just one candidate um, if there's no competitive selection. But what the DNC is doing and what we're doing in Democrats Abroad is using it as a test of our machine. We're trying to 
to get organization in place, as many people participating as possible in the primary, because statistically, if you vote in the primary, you're virtually certain to vote in the general election. Very few people will vote in a low, low turnout primary and not vote in the election. It also increases our pool of volunteers, our pool of activists that we can get move it, mobilized early. Um, so it's a way of getting ourselves in gear, and I think from that point of view, the primaries have been a huge success for us. So does Democrats, Democrats abroad, are you going to be focusing on your identified Democrat voters, or are you going to be looking to um, well, everybody else? Obviously both. Um, we're going to be looking for everyone we can find, and I think we take the perspective that if you are an American living here in Britain, there is a reasonably good chance that even if you're not a registered Democrat right now, we can persuade you to vote Democrat. Mm -hmm. Because people who live overseas tend to have a very different perspective on the world, they see American politics very differently. Even a lot of Republicans who move overseas find themselves in a short space of time realizing that actually if you see things from a European perspective not only is Obama doing a terrific job but some of the things that Republicans are saying are not doing us any favors um, and a global community so we have two goals first of all mobilization we have a, a mailing list obviously of our current members we're trying to get as many of them to participate as possible second of all um, promotion and outreach so the primary is our chance to tell the whole world that they can come and vote if they're an American citizen that anyone um, who's an American citizen, has a U.S. passport, can participate in a U.S. election, and if you want to vote in the Democratic primary, you can come down and vote in ours at any time, provided you haven't already voted in your state primary back home. Um, so it's a great chance for us to kind of build our membership and grow our membership. In the 2008 primary, we were able to pretty much triple our membership over the primary period because we had this wonderful hook of being able to tell people to, that they can come and vote in their, home, in their, in their country where they live. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, how, do, how is it going to compare <laughs> in terms of organisa organisation? 2000, 2008 must have taught you a lot. Yes. Um, because it was such a historic and a unique. Um, what, what are you going to do the same and what are you going to do differently this time? Well, so I think what we're going to do the same um, is we had, last time around, we had a huge grassroots on the ground effort here in the UK and across Europe and across the world. And I think we're going to try and do as much of that as we can again. So we went out, we met with American groups, we were doing voter registration at places like Canary Wharf excuse me, at um, outside the outside the Whole Foods in Kensington, mm -hmm. any place where Americans might congregate, we're going to try and replicate that. We're also going to try and do the same job of calling our current membership, making sure they know how to vote, getting really solid voter information to them. What we're going to do differently, and this is where I think we have a huge advantage, is we're going to start much earlier. Because in 2007, 2008, we were focusing on getting people to participate in the primary, we can we can go right to the general election right now. So we're talking about getting people registered for their general election ballots right now. Um, we have to be very strong on that though, because requesting your ballot is, is absolutely key for us. It's very, it can be a little tricky to vote. And if you haven't requested your ballot this year, there's not a 100% guarantee that you will be given a ballot. So everybody should go and do that ballot request. So when do they need to do that by? Um, they need to do it, different states have different rules, but assume you need to have requested your ballot at least one month ahead of the election. Um, so do it as soon as possible. We're now in 2012, so in this calendar year, if you register or request a ballot or vote in any primary, you will be registered for this election. So make sure you do that, mm -hmm. if there are any U.S. voters listening to my words right now. Mm -hmm. um, there have been some changes to, to U.S. voting laws over the, over the past couple of years that have meant that states that previously would automatically resend you a ballot are no longer required to do so. And we don't know yet which states are going to change their policies on that basis. So we're working on the assumption that everybody should re-request their ballot just to be safe. Okay. Thanks very much. Thank you.